The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, in particular, Sally Hardesty and her invalid brother, Franklin. It is all the more tragic in that they were young. But had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Summer is finally upon us, and with that, I've decided to cover an iceberg over one of my favorite horror franchises, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This specific iceberg was created by Reddit user u slash the fox ash and covers a wide variety of topics all surrounding the film series. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the movie, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a horror film created in 1974, directed by Tobe Hooper and written both by Hooper and one Kim Henkel. The movie follows a group of teenagers making their way through Texas, only to, well, be massacred by a cannibalistic family. With that being said, let's delve right into the first layer of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Iceberg. Also, just a short disclaimer, we are going to be discussing some pretty heavy stuff on here, such as incest, rape, cannibalism, and all-around disturbing content. If you do not wish to hear about any of the following I have listed, I would recommend turning off the video and watching something else. Viewer discretion is advised. The Cook The Cook is none other than Drayton Sawyer, brother to Leatherface and Hitchhiker in the original film. He takes on something of a father-like role to the two other brothers in the film, along with regularly abusing them throughout the duration of it. Leatherface Leatherface is the chainsaw-wielding maniac depicted within the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. His name given to him is due to his love of making masks of other people's faces and wearing them as his own. The Chainsaw Dance the Chainsaw Dance refers to the ending to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. With Sally having escaped Leatherface through the back of a pickup truck, Leatherface is seen doing a dance with the chainsaw. Although it may not sound like much, this scene stuck with many people and hence the scene was redone numerous times over the separate following films. Sally lives in the original. Sally Hardesty is the final girl within Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and despite having been tortured by the cannibalistic family from dusk till dawn, she escaped. Having left through the back of a pickup truck, she had stopped while being chased down by Leatherface. DVD Crossover In September of 2017, Leatherface was added to Dead by Daylight an asymmetrical horror game. His character kit involves being able to instantly down survivors using a chainsaw sweep, which, depicted, holds a very similar resemblance to Leatherface chasing Sally at the end of the first film. Having played as him in the game, he's just downright fun to play as. I'd recommend him. Multi-timelines. There are multiple differing timelines following the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film series, following each of the reboots and sequels over the years. The Cook's Real Name Within the original film, the Cook's name was never revealed. However, in the sequel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, one of the first early scenes showed off the cook winning a chili cook-off where his name, Drayton Sawyer, was revealed. Family Name 
The cannibalistic family name is none other than the Sawyers. However, this isn't the case within all of the films. Within the Texas Chainsaw 2003 reboot and Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning prequel in 2006, the family was renamed to the Hewitts. And in Texas Chainsaw the Next Generation, the family was renamed to the Slaughters. Other than this, the Sawyer name has continued throughout all of the films. Leather's real name. Leatherface throughout the films has been called a number of different names. However, the most notable of them all would have to be Jedediah or Jed Sawyer and Bubba Sawyer. Other aliases, however, include Junior, Tommy, and just Leather. The twins, Robert and Nubbins. Within the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, there was a hitchhiker portrayed by Edwin Neal. This hitchhiker, Nubbins, was one of the three cannibalistic brothers within the first film. Towards the end of it, however, he dies after being hit by a semi-truck. Within the sequel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, we're introduced to another member of the family, Chop Top, or Robert Sawyer, who is Nubbins' twin brother. Robert wasn't seen during the first film due to being on duty in Vietnam. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 doesn't fit in. Whenever production on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 had begun, there was something of a tonal shift within the series, where, rather than continue down the horror-centered route, director Tobe Hooper and writer Kit Carson wanted to take some of the more comedic elements from the first film and amp it up. I guess the reason why it doesn't fit in is because it's a comedy now? Still an amazing film in my opinion, and it is one of my favorites. Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 So during production of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Chop Top was originally going to be included as a character within the film. However, New Line Cinema didn't hold rights to the character, and instead opted to making a whole new character leading to Tex Sawyer. Texas Chainsaw 3D Timeline Flaw so, Texas Chainsaw 3D was supposed to be a direct sequel to the original, which had taken place in the 70s. However, the protagonist, Heather Sawyer, had been born during that time. Time eventually passes to what looks like the modern age, however, a now much older Millie still appears far too young for the time period. Unmasked Jed this entry refers to the 2003 Texas Chainsaw remake, where Jedediah Hewitt is unmasked in one of the scenes, showing off a hideously deformed and scarred face. Failed PG Rating Director Tobe Huber wanted the original film to have a PG rating. To do so, he purposefully left excessive gore out of the movie. However, after submitting the movie to the Motion Picture Association of America, the movie was promptly giving an X rating. All American Massacre. So, this is a little bit of lost media in the Texas Chainsaw fandom. There is apparently going to be a spin off movie featuring Chop Top as the main star, known as All American Massacre. Little is actually known about the film. However, there are cast interviews online for it. If you'd like to know more, I'd recommend The Lost Texas Chainsaw Massacre Movie from Wang. Autistic Bubba Within the original film, Tobe Hooper had never intended for Leatherface to be autistic. However, as time passed, he seemed to be interpreted as such during the rest of the films. Based on a true story marketing, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the entire film series behind it all really happened. Nah, I'm just screwing with ya. A lot of what was actually portrayed within the original film was loosely based on the crimes of Ed Gein, 
a criminal who made furniture and clothing out of human body parts. However, to say it was based on a true story is nothing short of exaggerated. Chainsaw Dance Scared Huber I originally assumed this entry was referring to the last scene in the original film, with Leatherface's chainsaw dance and Huber getting scared by it, supposedly. However, what this entry was actually referring to was the scene intended to scare Huber, but failed, as said in an interview. Franklin Method Acting Paul Partain, the actor for Franklin in the original film, had decided he wanted to stay in character both on and off set. The rest of the cast actually grew tired of him very quickly due to the character's whiny nature. Another thing to add is that none of the victim cast interacted with Gunnar Hansen, the actor for Leatherface, in between takes. They had only interacted once the specific actor's death scene was finished with. Actors hurt during filming. Apparently, almost every cast member had suffered an injury during the filming of the original movie. The actor for Nubbins, Edwin Neal, had burned his face on some asphalt while jumping out into the road, while the actor for Franklin, Paul Partain, had cut himself numerous times while rolling down a hill in one of the early scenes. Jason vs. Leatherface There are comics out there depicting Jason Voorhees versus Leatherface. I personally haven't read them, but the concept seems pretty sweet. Jason is Leatherface's friend. In the Jason vs. Leatherface comics, there is a specific panel depicting Jason being friendly towards Leatherface. Nobody knows what Drayton is. I believe this is referring to Drayton having something of a father-like role, along with appearing significantly older despite being a brother to Leatherface and Nubbins. He's also described in different pieces of media, such as the comics, to be their father. Pick and choose lore. With the latest entry in the film franchise, director David Blue Garcia went on to say the following about the sequel's predecessors. We like to call this a direct sequel to the original. Not that it ignores all the other films in between, but those aren't as important to the story. You can pick and choose what you want to from those other films. Junior. This is what Leatherface was referred to as in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. It's just another entry in a long list of aliases given to our favorite cannibal. Leatherface is inbred in the main timeline. It's heavily suggested that the Sawyer family engaged in inbreeding, with a lack of a maternal figure within the family other than Grandma within Texas Chainsaw 2. The Texas Chainsaw Manicure Bill Mosley, actor for Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, made a parody of the original film called The Texas Chainsaw Manicure. Tobe Huper had seen the parody and had not only loved it, but had loved Bill's performance as the hitchhiker within it. This eventually led to the casting of Bill as Chop Top in the sequel of the original. Texas Chainsaw Comics Over the years, there's been a whole slew of Texas Chainsaw Massacre comics. The most popular being Chasen vs. Leatherface and the DC Comics run in 2008. Bubba wasn't supposed to be autistic. Leatherface was never intended to be autistic at any point during the original film's production. However, later on, the character was interpreted as such. DBD Bubba Blackface Within Dead by Daylight, as a part of the release for Leatherface, you can earn up to four unique cosmetics for the character, which gave him a variety of different faces. 
all of which were based on the original four Survivor characters you could play as. One of the character faces was that of an African American character, Claudette. Some players decided to start wearing the cosmetic and target other African American characters specifically, and thus the cosmetic was promptly removed. Several Families Theory This theory suggests that each of the families featured throughout all of the films are entirely different from one another and unrelated through blood. Head Cheese Head Cheese was the original title for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The script for the movie also just went under the name of Leatherface. However, post-production, they had eventually settled on the name Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Real Skeletons On Set A lot of the skeletons seen on set are real. Having been purchased from India for cheap, this was apparently due to budget limitations. Unmasked Bubba Within the Jason vs. Leatherface comic, there's apparently a panel that shows off Leatherface without his mask. Mafia Money Tobe Huper had needed help in terms of actually distributing the original film. He had eventually turned to a company by the name of Bryanston Films, which had involvement with the New York Colombo crime family. The large majority of the cast also just didn't see a whole lot of success from the original film because of this, so... The Family Works for the Government Within the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, the plot includes that of the Illuminati entangled with the family somehow, suggesting that the family may be working for the government. The Novels A lot of the films have gotten novelized versions. As far as I know, a lot of them are still up for purchase online to this day. The Corn Bugs Cornbugs is a fictional band that features Bill Mosley. A lot of the songs featured depict that of the character Chop Top singing about meat. Rapist Leather So, within Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, there's this little girl running around under the Sawyer's home, and it's heavily implied that this is none other than Leatherface's kid. It's also heavily implied that this kid was a product of a rape. Bubba can talk very selectively. Something very interesting about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series is that within the first film, Leatherface actually speaks. To be frank, he only speaks to his family and none of the victims. However, this was never continued on in any of the other films. Sharknado 4 Leatherface In Sharknado 4, the protagonist of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 plays a character named Stretch. Funnily enough, she runs a chainsaw store. Even funnily enough, in the film, she has a cousin named Gunner being a reference to the original actor for Leatherface. And as if that wasn't enough, Gunner is played by Dan Yeager, who played Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw 3D. Bubba can drive. Within the song, Pigs Are People Too, a song by Chop Top's band, The Corn Bugs, it is described that Bubba can drive. Having been pulled over by a cop, where Chop Top begins to hallucinate the cop as none other than a pig. Texas Chainsaw and Saw share a universe. In Texas Chainsaw 3D, Leatherface seems to run into somebody dressed in a jigsaw-like getup. It's an obvious reference to the film series following the same name, and many fans speculate that the two franchises share a universe. Bubba thinks his killing is a game. Throughout the films, especially in the first, Bubba is seen with something of a childlike mind. 
It's not too far-fetched to think that maybe he's suffering from a delusion, making him think that killing people would be a game. Chop Top kills from hallucinations. So within the song Pigs Are People Too by the Cornbugs, you can hear Chop Top state that the sounds that the pigs make when being slaughtered are damn near human, and that he sees pigs wearing pants. It's suggested that all Chop Top sees when he's out killing is just hallucinations of people as pigs. The Cornbugs are canon theory. All of the Cornbug songs are sung by none other than Chop Top. They reference events in the films, and a lot of the album covers as well show off Chop Top, suggesting that the band could be canon. However, nothing has yet been confirmed. Pigs are people. This is a song by the Cornbugs. Chop Top basically goes on and on about how pigs are people too, and how much he loves the slaughter. This message also stems from the original idea behind the film being that of social commentary, and how the film had something of an anti-meat message giving a disturbing comparison between humans and livestock. Leatherface is a god theory, and the family is a cult theory. So both of these entries kind of go hand in hand. There's a theory out and about stating that Leatherface is a harbinger of doom and death, doing nothing but slaughter all within his path within a mortal form. This harbinger would then be killed off only to be resurrected and reincarnated into separate families and cults alike. Chop Top and Nubbins are autistic. Within the first and second films of the franchise, both Chop Top and Nubbins throughout their respective films give off traits heavily associated with autism. Nubbins has his fixation on that of the meat industry and being an artist of sorts, likely having made not only Leatherface's masks, but also seemingly pretty adamant of selling the photo of the original teens to Franklin. And Chop Top had his love of music. The two also had their respective stims, or stimulating behaviors, that they often repeated throughout their films, with Chop Top scratching his plate and the two of them waving their hands in the air. And with that being said, that brings us to the very end of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Iceberg. I hope you all learned something today and enjoyed the video like to take a moment to thank the Fox Ash for helping me put together the information for these entries. As much as I love these movies, there's a lot on here that seriously had me stumped, and without them, I wouldn't have been able to put this whole thing together to begin with. I'd also like to thank Toby S for allowing me to use his gameplay of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game for background footage. If there's anything I got wrong that you'd like to let me know about, please don't hesitate to let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you all so much for watching, and please have a wonderful day.